every single Vantage Score model explained. That means Vantage Score 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0 explained in this video. Let's dive into it. All right, my friends, welcome back. So I've got some nice, pretty little graphs and pie charts to follow along because we can use similar to what we look at with uh, FICO. That being said, Vantage is quite different. And uh, you're gonna start to see the differences between the two. And by the end of this video, I hope you're gonna walk away with everything that you need to know to understand the differences between FICO and Vantage, as well as understand the differences between the 3.0, 4.0, so that you've got all the intel you need to be able to pull the trigger on any applications that are gonna use Vantage. Now. I know that uh, a lot of people are thinking Vantage, like who cares, man? Like that's the weird score that you get on um, Credit Karma. It's usually way off. It's like 20 to 60 points different than my FICO. And most banks just use FICO, so who cares, right? Wrong. There actually are some credit unions and some institutions that leverage Vantage for different means, whether this is for credit products, credit limit increases. We've seen this now happening. Now, it is at a small scale, but it's worth going through this. So that's what we're gonna to tackle today. Okay, so let's cover some of the basics out of the gates here. Vantage was created in 2006 when literally the three credit bureaus, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian created it because they were trying to look for a competitor to FICO. FICO was the only model at the time. So here's what's interesting is prior to the Vantage score, each of the credit bureaus used their own uh, credit scoring model essentially, which led to different outcomes in the credit scores and even in the same credit report, you would see a wide range of different scores because this obviously confused people, maybe made them mad, and people weren't really following along with it. That's why they decided to sync up and launch Vantage, right? Which now we have Vantage score, FICO, and then there's a ton of second tier data aggregates and uh, data furnitures that help feed the primary three credit bureaus to you know, decide if they're going to extend your credit or not. Okay, so Vantage score groups uh, credit information into six main categories. Here are essentially the, um, the categories. We have payment history, which is extremely influential. I'm gonna give you percentages, but just understand that they kind of work off of this extremely influential or less, okay? So payment history, extremely influential. Age and type of credit, highly influential. Percentage of credit limit used, highly influential. Total balances and debt. Notice how that's separate from percentage of credit line used. We have two separate things saying the same thing. Interesting, right? And so total balances and debt is moderately influential and recent credit behavior and inquiries, less influential, available credit, less influential. Okay, so here's the first nugget is, this is one of the reasons why you can see such a huge difference between your FICO scores and your Vantage scores is because of a few different things. The main one being that they look at utilization on a card by card basis and they look at it both on the consumer credit card side and the installment side. So because those factors are both separated and not grouped together like you see in FICO, that can be a reason why we see those big differences. So things like A0 and having all your utilization on like one or two cards that are like 70 or 80% on the limits, but the rest is at zero. That's why those strategies don't really work on the Vantage side is because they're looking at across the boards. Make sense? Okay, so that's the big thing to note here. And lastly, just to nail it home, is I told you that they look at the total balances and debt and the percentage of credit limit used as two separate categories, as well as a third, if we wanted to throw it in there, as available credit, which is less influential. That works out to be, I think, like a percent, right? So doesn't matter though, we have these categories broken out into three separate things to kind of cover one topic and one category that you would see over on the FICO side. All right, Vantage 2.0 and all the previous models. So before, uh, they operated off of a 501 to a 990 credit score system. Instead of 850 being the max like we see in FICO, you could have up to a 990, which would be wild, wouldn't it? It'd be wild if you could have like a thousand. Just because it's like so many people, it's so ingrained in their brain for 850, it'd just be wild to see. Higher scores are obviously better. Vantage score assigns a letter grade to each of the consumer's credit, uh, credit scores as well at this stage. And the letter grade takes the guesswork out of figuring out uh, what's a good credit score. Okay, so here we go. We've got 900 to 990. That is an A. <laughs> that is super prime. 11% of consumers are super prime. Then we have 801 to 900, and that's a B. That's prime plus, 29%. We've got 701 to 800. That is a C. That is prime, 
21% of people fit into that category. Uh, 601 to 700, that is a D, that is non-prime, and that is 20% of people fit into there. And then we've got high risk, which is 501 to 600, that's an F, 19%. That was the letter grade system. And obviously we've got in front of us the, uh, the actual pie chart here. So here is the weighted factors and how they look at it, right? We've got 31% to recent and available credit. We've got 28% to payment history. So payment history across the board with FICO Vantage, super important, right? So having lates, having bad payment history is gonna affect you across the boards no matter what, okay? Just like having overall bad utilization or large utilization, 50% or more, is gonna negatively affect you across both scoring platforms as well. Way more on the Vantage side uh, than you'll see on FICO, right? Next. 23% for utilization, 9% to balances. Again, utilization and balances, kind of saying the same thing there. 9% depth of credit, that's I think a fancy way of saying age. We're gonna read the notes here in just a second. 28% to payment history, whether your payments are satisfactory, delinquent, or derogatory. Utilization, the amount of credit you've used. Balances, the amount of recent reported current and delinquent balances. That's interesting. So delinquencies are essentially affecting you twice. Payment history side and balances. Depth of credit. That is the length of your credit history and types of accounts you have, okay? Like I said, that's like credit mix. Recent accounts is 30%. Number of recently opened credit accounts and credit inquiries. So here's the last one. The recent credit and an available credit. Available credit is just 1%, but that's grouped in with recent and available credit. Remember that was 31% altogether. So recent credit is just the number of recently opened uh, credit accounts and uh, credit inquiries. And then uh, available credit is the amount of available credit on your credit card accounts. So after 2.0 launched, there had to be revisions, right? Just like there was changes in FICO, like we went from FICO two, four, uh, what do we got, six, eight, nine, and now 10, I think, is how FICO went, I don't know, we got a dedicated video on FICO, you can watch all that. In 2013, Vantage Score upgraded to their 3.0 release, which to this day is still the most common release that you'll see out there. It is the most common Vantage Score that you will get with, what is that, Nerd Wallet, Credit Karma, Wallet Hub, Credit Wise, I think the free one that you get on the uh, American Express or Amex, and probably a bunch of others, that one all tends to be Vantage 3. There's only one or two of them that even offer Vantage 4.0. Like I said, Vantage 3.0 is the primary one used. Okay, 2013, that's when they launched it. The reason why this has lasted so long is because that's when they adopted First and foremost, the uh, 300 to 850 credit range idea that FICO had. Okay, so now they're both basically the same in terms of the number. Vantage 3.0 calculates credit scores based on the following factors. Payment history is 40%. Credit used is 20%. Total balances and debt, 11%. Recent credit behavior and inquiries, 5%. Available credit, 3%. So you see, we've made some changes. Additionally, Vantage 3.0 forgives consumers for delinquencies during natural disasters. That seemed to be a highlight there. It rewards high quality consumers for paying off mortgages, ignores collections. So does FICO 9 and the upcoming FICO 10 and 10T also do as well. And it minimizes authorized users. So again, expect authorized users to hit differently across your FICO and your Vantage scores. Most people don't care because they're looking at FICO. Uh, Vantage 3.0 also weighs late mortgage payments more heavily than other late payments. Uh, allows just 14 days for rate shopping for a car or mortgage, counting all inquiries in that time as one compared to 45 days with FICO, or you could just get them removed. And uh, here's the breakdown. So we've got the 34% of amount owed, that's 20% utilization, 11% balances, 3% available credit, 40% payment history, so that importance went way up, 5% for utilization, and 21% for depth of credit. Okay, Vantage 4.0, that's what most of you are here for, so let's dive into it. It was rolled out in the fall of 2017. It was introduced with improved ability to score consumers with limited credit history or no credit history, more on that in a second. The company says it uses machine learning to help score these consumers. The 4.0 model includes trended data, which looks at your credit usage over time rather than taking a snapshot at one moment in time. This is similar to what we see with FICO 10 and 10T as well. It goes back looking um, upwards of 24 months. The updated model also places less importance and weight on certain negative reporting items like medical collection accounts, tax liens, and public records, okay? So here is the breakdown for 4.0. You'll see, we've got 41% as payment history. Notice how that's just like getting bigger and bigger part of the pie, right? Age mix of credit is 20%, utilization is 20%, new credit is now 11%, balances 6%, available credit 2%. So we're still literally covering three categories that say the same thing. Utilization, balance, available credit. So this is 28% of the, the pie chart here is still being covered with balances, right? And, and how much you're actually using. So interesting to note. So there you go. There's the differences between 3.0, 4.0, and uh, 4.0, I guess if I were to say anything about it, 
It's using a lot more machine learning, just like FICO 10 and 10T, and it's looking back at a longer period of time to see how you're using your credit, which is very similar to 10 and 10T. All right, last thing I wanna to touch on before we wrap up the video, it's worth noting that the biggest difference, I guess you could say, between FICO and Vantage Score is that FICO, you need to have one or more accounts that have been open for at least six months and at least one account that has reported to the credit bureaus within the past six months. Otherwise, you won't get a FICO score. On the other hand, with Vantage, they can use data from just one month's history or one account that's been opened within the previous 24 months. That's pretty crazy. So if we're talking about just the pure benefits of getting more people into the credit system, Vantage wins all day, hands down. So anyways, if you're new to credit or haven't used your credit in a while, then the FICO score, you most likely won't get one. But with Vantage, there's a higher likelihood that you will. Let's wrap up with where you can check out these scores. I talked about Credit Karma, Wallet Hub. Uh, let's see what else. Credit C same, Credit Wise, Nerd Wallet. Uh, with Navy Fed, getting a checking and credit account, you'll be able to get uh, your Vantage scores there. Amex, you'll be able to get your Vantage. There's plenty of others. I'm sure there's so many out there. With Nav, you can get your Experian Vantage as well. So lots of these are free. Some of them are paid. That's how you check it out. Hopefully this helps you figure out what's going on with Vantage, how it compares to FICO, and then obviously the differences between the models. Comment below if you got something to say. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Hey, you should subscribe. 60% of you are not subscribed yet, right there. Okay, bye. Okay.